Good. And I am here, and my volume is a bit lower. Go on, Martin. Annoying having a laptop, I have to start it half, or every time I move, I move my laptop upstairs and use it. I'm using my squeaky chair, but my office chair's there, don't know why. But this is a fairly impromptu stream. Um, yeah. I was originally pla planning to stream yesterday. I always kind of plan to stream today, but um, I'm basically making dinner and all food and everything. It took a lot, took a lot longer than anticipated, so I didn't really have time, and I was exhausted by um, the evening, so that's why. Isn't the uh, Lunar Research stream? I'm currently doing more on that. I've actually started reading some academic stuff on that at the moment, so I'm. It probably will be my next stream. Uh, also, the stuff for Bolsonaro as well, some ditch around that. So, I probably will go over that. So, some hot Ribena, which is delicious. If anyone doesn't know in the UK, we're hitting cold snap. It's getting <laughs> really cold again. I thought it was over, but it's going to be like minus three tomorrow. I'm going to have a lot of fun the ice in my car in the morning. But making sure everything's all right. Uh, yeah, I think one sec. I think one more second is okay. I think this is probably the cleanest audio I've ever had, to be honest. I managed to sort stuff out. So, yeah. All right, there's some, some fuck knuckles. Oh, I think this would be Canada. I'm going to set up all this stuff. Oh. Uh, source. I'm streaming a lot now. I was <laughs> get the stuff. There you go. So what's this? So it's never once been the police that have protested these gatherings. So a drug performer was reading a story to children inside the library. The man with the megaphone protesting uh, the reading. He's confused. So that, so that guy is a, a transphobe, and all those are black shirt, but he tends to fuck off, which they should do. Bit up a bit. I'm planning in the. Could be moving out in like six weeks, maybe just six, seven weeks, so the background's gonna change a lot. We'll then get some nice uh, bisexual lighting as well. Make it a bit nicer rather than just a like, creamish background. But yeah. Then that, we're talking about some. <laughs> My well, channel is very trans right focus at the moment, but most of it seems to kind of be because that's the main thing that's under threat, especially in, well not especially, I think it's kind of worse in America at the moment, especially with the Arkansas law, it basically prevent, pre prevents anyone like that is shown the opposite uh, like gender born with from performing like dancing in public, so then it's like, well, you can't show a lot of media, like a lot of popular stuff as well. So yeah. Oh, let's have a see. Let's have a look. What uh, see what the the living frog has to say. So I've got segments planned. This isn't just me aimlessly rambling at the moment. I've got stuff planned, but I was I was popping on Twitter before I started stream. Um, God, I I apologies for this. Oh God, he's looks like a frog. So he says. We try to find a phrase to sum up the Labour and Conservative parties now. Ten years ago. I used to say, so what you said, we are living in a world of non-binary politics. A more modern terminology would be non-binary. Yes, we are in non-binary politics because on the NHS, the Conservatives won't admit that it's broken. They did it break it though. It's not like oh, it's not. It's not. It just doesn't work. No, it just hasn't been supported. Saying for years, it's the envy of the world. They poured in endless amounts of money. And yeah, know, if you look. I have this debate with friends, like, oh, the, the Tories give them more money each year, but they kind of have to because of inflation, but they're not matching the inflation prices a lot of the time. It just, just costs more anyway. So, my mic up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, oh, that's not bad. Yeah, radical reform is not on the agenda. Today, Keir Starmer, writing in the Sunday Telegraph, 
actually says it's not working. You may have a sentimental attachment to it, but it's no good as it is. It needs fundamental change and reform. So a complete... Fundamental change is literally just needs funding. Left, right, reversal. The Tories supporting high tax, high spending, Labour looking at reform. Whether Starmer really means it or not, it's... That's a weird thing you sort of write on, but at the same time, I am fully aware that that man wants to completely, like, go away with it and make a private form. They can make a lot of money out of it, because that's what Nigel Farage does. He's a grifter. Big old fucking grifter. So we've got quite a lot of things optional tonight that if I've got tight, I, I, I'm meant to have a Discord call in a bit, not on stream with some friends. Um, but we are notoriously bad at getting back to each other. So I am literally at best, and that's probably when I'll end stream. Um, so yeah, so. Oh. Uh, Justin Rowland, everyone's doing the Matrix stuff now, which is kind of, kind of, not great at the moment, there's not, oops, excuse me, got to burp in the microphone, last thing I want to do. I think this, this might kick off what I actually wanted to cover. Um, yeah, I think I want to kick you off now. And warm up because it's freezing in here. Thank God I'm leaving. My, my house is not a good heating and ventilation, so I'm quite glad to get an apartment. My, my, my uh, apartment doesn't be nice and warm. So. so, been a lot of discussion on trans issues in the UK, especially since last month. We had the um, gender recognition uh, bill passed in Scotland, um, basically doing away with, oh, we have to watch you for six months, not six months, a couple of years. It's now, uh, it's now sort of broken down to three months, three months. Um, so uh, basically people don't have to go for agonising pain have, have in, in terms of on the waiting list to see, um, to see like therapists, to see whether they need gender affirming care. Um, so yeah, a lot more positive. Um, and the terse went fucking insane, like literally went insane. A woman flashed herself in, um, is it, was it in Scottish Parliament, I'm pretty sure they, they flashed themselves. So it's just like, you know, totally normal behaviour, totally normal behaviour. Um, and a lot of that kind of uh, Scotland being quite progressive, a lot of the discussions, obviously, England, when neighbouring Scotland, has spilled in directly into English politics, which has caused some kind of weird, weird discourse, which unfortunately, is, as England is to a fucking island, been fairly negative toward trans people for the most part, including Labour also being fairly... Uh, no one wants to politicise it. That's kind of no one wants to politicise it. Um, people see it as cultural politics, like they do in America. Um, even if, for the most part, people do support trans rights, marginally when actually discussed. So there is kind of that situation. But I thought, to begin with, so, so this is a thread about supporters of the Scottish Family Party and what they think is an acceptable way to treat women. When the women in question is Nicola Sturgeon warning offensive content, but you know, say this is fine for Twitch and YouTube. So, so do you like anal? Very, very fucking normal. That's normal behaviour. Anyone? Which is, nope. But it's a thread. So let's have a look at the. Let's look at the thread. Uh, so yeah, that's hilarious. The three tweets follow. Her husband does. No more than the next guy. Uh, what's that? Well, I suppose to avoid having a look at her. Uh, if that goes on and what stuff. But yeah. Uh, and what's all, basically, the family friendly party isn't really being family friendly. They're just openly being sexually harassing Nicola Sturgeon. As you do, you know. Uh, another thing is the LGBA has been uh, 
it's been going on at the moment, and the LGB alliance in particular, which which is the LGBA. Um, but again, that's something I want to do a research stream on. I've been looking at them quite a lot. Uh, the head of the LGBA, bit of a Nazi, not a bit of what a, a partner definitely is. Uh, so yeah. So LGBA is a hate group. They're the excluding, they're obviously taking the T, the trans out of LGBT, and they've already run with it. And a lot of lots have been following at the moment. So a lot, a lot of stuff has come on about that. If not mistaken, LGBT isn't a group per se, but it's just a way up to put LGs and Bs together. The LGB is the LGB alliance. They just people they just believe in the existence of LGBs. TS are mentally ill people who this but uh, yeah, according to, according to them, was I thought leave it on that. Well, no, they are they are actually right wingers. A lot of this stuff has been just caught, has been circling around on Twitter. Duh, thanks to this woman in question, J.K. Rowling, who you know the Queen of the Turfs, and obviously she's got well. There's the new game coming out, which I'm very split on. It's in terms of obviously not supporting J.K. Rowling because of that. I don't know how much she gets in royalties. Then, but then also, I was trying to see if, if I can find it. But also, the game developers have come out and said, like, yeah, we don't actually agree with any any of her kind of takes. So it is a very tumultuous situation. I'm trying to see if I can find it. So, let's see. So it's in Dope Sports. Okay, I will link this in the description because it's not like I'm going to read it now, which is kind of annoying. But the kind of developers come out and basically say we don't stand with her at all. She's not involved in it. Like, she created the world and that's kind of it. And the world she created is a bit, a bit questionable at best. So honestly, I'm not quite interested in the game. But then you got Nigelis Black, who's the head teacher of Hogwarts, and Nigelis and Latin's Black. So the character's name is literally fucking Black Black, which is a good job. The character isn't actually black. I'm surprised he hasn't gone that way, but yeah. So King Queen of the Turfs. So what we're going on at the moment is the article she, she retweeted from the Observer, not the Guardian. They self described progressive politicians have proved too gutless to advocate balance. Marginalised women in prison and domestic abuse services who require intimate care as a result of disability who will bear the consequences of their characters. Kind of what the sort of dog whistle here is that J.K. Rowling always likes to push is that trans people are racists. They're not. It's just fucking sort of bullshit. It's just fear mongering. But obviously, this game picked up by left a uh, left in quote quotation marks um newspapers kind of skews the balance and people think it, it less of a political issue and more like oh it's just basic like human knowledge even though it's fucking not not like, arguing with turf it's like near impossible because you actually start dis dis uh, discussing stuff with them like you know um like actual scientists understanding of sex has been like bimodal and by that point you fucking lost them in the weeds and they're never going to reply to you so. There's that, but got a lot of stuff to cover now. So we've got Guardian's kind of take on it. You've got Richard Sheen that's come out and talks about it as well. Um, the, the in terms of the conversion therapy side of it, uh, Star Wars also come out and basically said we're not playing this game as I just said. So there's a fair bit to cover at the moment. So I will, as always. A lot cleaner to read. So, the Observer view on Scotland's controversial proposed gender reforms. So, the Observer's kind of a stance on this. This is quite a data point, as I said. A lot of, um, lots of them covering this kind of data because not having internet for a while, or well, actually functioning internet for a while. Why? So, what is a woman? This answer to this question has been kind of highly contentious political issue. Uh, for anyone like, oh, there's not a woman, um, I probably will. Kick it in below, even though right now the irony is quite lost in it. But um, Lone Box is quite a good video on it, even though Lone Box has been taking some L's and those trans takes in terms of 
him saying, oh, they're not actually genociding it, but then his stance on, oh, the UN would prevent it, even though the UN actually doesn't do anything when it comes to genocide against people's gender. Like, they, they actively don't. They don't, don't perceive it as a genocide. Um, and also a lot of the shit coming out of, of the proposed, obviously not passed, a lot of them are proposed bill banning anything to do with um, gender surgery or any like help or any me medical help until the age of 26. Which by then, you know, a lot of them are gonna be on the lit, be on the uh, percentage, which is quite horrible. So, but then again, his video itself was actually very good. So, so it lies at the heart of the rights conflict that has turned toxic between those who believe someone's self-described gender identity should override biological sex. Sex and gender aren't, uh, aren't the same. The purposes of single sex services and sports are those who think biological uh, sex remains a relevant concept in law and society. A conflict comes to head this week in Scotland where SNPs, remember this is old, will vote on the SNPs reform to require people to be legally treated as opposite sex on the basis of their self-identification. The UK was one of the first countries to introduce important legal protection against discrimination for trans people in 1999. A lot of that stuff, as we see today, is very transmedicalist. It's not, it's not very socially progressive at all. Uh, these are today enshrined in the 2010 Equality Act, which is, again, is 12 years old and it's already outdated, and the protected char characteristics of gender reassignment. So you've had to have surgery in order to be seen as it. As we know, a lot of people can't get surgery, there's a long waiting list, our NHS fucks, so on and so forth. Also protects women against sex discrimination and sets out that it is lawful to provide female only services in sports, excluding any male regardless of gender identity. That's the kind of this is the main thing they're hearing on now, where it's like basically because they have a penis and something between their legs that is not vagina, uh, they should be excluded from it because you know, trans women go into prison and impregnate every single person there. Then, but the other problem. A lot of my arguments with Turks come out with, oh, but they're, um, what is it? They should be put, they, they should put in like their own separate prison. And it's like, but that's not the point of, not affirming what gender identity is kind of thing. It doesn't really work like that. Well, it shouldn't, as I say. Uh, if they are, oh, crap. No, we're we'll kicking it back to them. Give me two secs. I always keep it like that. Oh no, I'll skip like this. That was annoying. Yeah, some people will vote, even though we know it's passed. So the UK is one of the first countries to introduce important legal sets, not all that, it's all passed. <clears throat> it, is, it is a sophisticated legal balancing act. A small group of trans people, around 5,000, have whether changed their sex for the most legal uh, purposes and provision in the 2004 Gender Recognition Act. But don't forget, um, like the, the census, the census that was just released showed that one in 200 people come, are either trans or like non-binary. That's a lot of fucking people, one in 200. Well, it's not just not that as well, it's also like, it's also like um, uh, the sex as well. So like, maybe, so basically one in 200 people are part of the LGBTQ plus community, which is a lot of people. Uh, the, uh, the Scottish courts last week ruled that it does, obviously we know all this already, uh, these reforms would grant a GRC to any male who declares that they intend to live as an opposite sex. Um, I think the problem with this is, like, it's not... A lot of reporting misses the nuance of it. A lot of people, people aren't, like, they're not just people putting on wigs being like, I'm a woman, that's not how it works. And the actual... There is still a review thing when it comes to in this bill, it just means reviews shorter. It's not like how long it was, can't remember what it was beforehand. Um, but yeah, they still technically do get like reviewed. It's not just a, oh, you're just that now. It's like, no, there is steps, not as many as easier access, which I believe it should be, but there is differences. Yeah, fair bit going on at the moment. So these, these reforms will make it harder for women to access female only services and spaces such as prisons, hospital wards and intimate care. Why? 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 You need to say, oh, uh, it's like when I used to grade, it's when I used to say grade on my, my papers and it's like, I just want you to tell me why. You say it what it is, great, but you need to say why. 
And it's like, so I say, oh yeah, but it's because they're now, because um, you know, everyone's, cha- everyone's going to change. Like, very small percentages are going to do that. And the idea that someone's not going to ask someone now that they put a wig on, like someone put a wig on, say I'm a woman, and they go around and like, uh, like hurt children and women. It's like, they would have probably done that before this bill anyway. This bill doesn't change much. Go into it. So they make it more complex for providers to legally justify the provision of single sex. Uh, single sex services no it doesn't no 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 it doesn't um it, the the bill basically says like it's up to independent services but like, like uh women's shelters to decide that it just said it just left it like for the most part would do it but you will decide so there's that. Uh, that. Oh, okay. This is a fucking turf article. So that is wrong. Just as trans people have the rights to access. I should know. I say that. I should read first. Um, that is wrong. Just as trans people have the right to access specialist services and gender neutral spaces appropriate for their needs, women have the rights on grounds of privacy and dignity to access female only spaces where they are where they are vulnerable on dressing or receiving intimate care. Uh, female only spaces. It's like what is a female? Sex is bimodal. The the, com- com- uh, the complexity of it. Uh, different chromosomal makeup. There's a lot of chromosomal pairs. I think it's like forty something. Um, yeah. So there's uh, the com- the complexity in this is quite hard. And for those people who quote unquote like say like are past. Oh, it gets examples like Keffels. Like for the most part, if someone didn't tell me Keffels was trans. I would. I personally wouldn't like realize it. And I and um, if I saw, I'd be more weirded out. If I, uh, not more, I would be a bit more weirded out if, say, I'm in like a men's own space and I have someone that clearly to me is a woman, looks like a woman, sounds like a woman, is actually a woman, then come into the services where it's like, um, like changing rooms or anything. I think most guys would be as well. It's one of those things where it's like. Like, oh, this is awful. And it's like your presumption. Their presumption is, you know, the people that the people that are floating on, um, like floating around online. The people literally like in, um, like like cross dressers, quote unquote. That's what they fear. They don't fear people actually going through gender affirming care. But then it's this, yeah, it's just this scaremongering tactic. But yeah. So what well, surprise? So, surgeons would allow any man who signs a declaration to have enhanced legal... No, 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 no. Let's see if I can find it again. This isn't, I didn't even think I'd be in this article for this long, to be honest. I thought I would be a bit far ahead. Um... Uh, yeah, because literally I'm meeting with safeguards. Um, Even the UN's in about it. Uh, and obviously the UN has come against it because the UN's a bit dirty. Yep, so... Oh. The bill includes safeguarding against misuse of systems. It would be a criminal offence for applicants to make a false application. Any statutory aggravator and risk based approach in relation. Um, oh, one, there's another board in here. Is it border panel? No. Oh, it's a problem. I'll try and find the actual longer one. Oh, is it? Um. Meaning gender recognition, meaning of trans, current positions. Yeah. 
So there's still a panel involved. It's not just any person doing it. If the panel, yeah. Oh, that's gone processed. I make sure to. Oh, there's anything I'm doing it live as well, my cuffer falls. Oh, it's further down. The bill does not make change to public policy of the 2010 policy act because a number of exemptions which allow for trans people to be excluded from one. The bill does not make changes to public policy of the 2010 Equality Act, which includes a number of exceptions which allow for trans people to be excluded when this is a proportionate means of achieving a legitimate aim. This means that single sex services are protected uh, as are single sex employment rights and health services. Those exceptions are important. Scottish government supports them. So the whole idea that the forces do it is a lie. Obtaining a GRC will remain a serious and lifelong commitment, and applicants will be required to make a statutory declaration to this effect. This is a balance for a proportionate way of improving the current system. And basically, if you don't lying, you get quite a, quite like a couple of years in prison just for lying. The bill provisions include applications will, uh, will be made to the registrar generally for Scotland, so the Gender Recognition Panel, uh, UK Tribunal. Uh, applicants do not need to submit medical diagnosis. The reason why is because it's difficult to get one. A lot of them, that to get a medical diagnosis, you have to be 18 or over. Um, applicants will make a statutory declaration that they have lived in the acquired gender for at least three months before apply, apply more than two years, and that they tend to live permanently in their acquired gender. Applica uh, the application will be determined by the Registrar General after three months of flight. Yes! Fucking thank you, I knew it was there. But it's six months rather than like people saying straight away. But then they get reviewed later on. So again, a lot of this shit is just misinformation. It's, it's, yeah. It's, a lot of this is just misinformation. I think you've never read this one before, but no, there's a lot of them. Yeah, uh, uh, there are cases of male sex offenders identifying as women after their conviction. Yeah, but that's different though. That's literally because they want to be put in a woman in prison, so they're not like themselves aren't hard in prison and are treated better. And they would have to prove that they've been living like that as well. That like, oh, I'm just a woman. It's like evidence. And obviously, they have reports in prison about how they've been living. Um, but it's now being placed in women's prisons after violent attacking uh, an inmate in a men's prison. The SNP will be in doubt. Well, yeah, that's just that's just the prisons being retarded. Important thing for the UN expert. But again, we know from the fact that the UN doesn't count anything against trans people or gender as like an issue. Are very much on the two gender kind of thing and aren't very trans friendly. Uh, the other major issue with the reform is that it introduces provisions to allow children aged 16 and 17 to change their legal, which is interesting actually comes with this because Scotland's been very wanted like people in the age of 18, 16 to vote. Um, which the guiding role if memory serves me well, has been quite a uh, quite a price dance. So this but so let's see what the issues are with this. This moves Scotland in the opposite direction to oh yeah, yeah, we know. Uh, when the country's my most senior pediatricians, yes, but she's put in a what I what is it, an observation thing with trans people. Um, so rather, than, it's basically put in the approach that everyone said like, please don't do. It's like I can't remember what it is in detail now. Um, I'll try to link it because it was in um, a couple of months ago. We did I did a stream. Where I looked at like quite. I actually looked at some papers. Um, when regarding this, and basically all of them came out and was like a lot of cha all the challenge charities, like even universally, it may not have come out against what the NHS has actually done, but have come out strongly against what they advocate because it doesn't work and might like, happen with trans people. It basically needs trans people to be, be basically forces them very high to come out of the closet, and there's not really much like psychological help really for them getting to that point. So yeah, uh, rather than grappling with the serious concerns, the SP Green Governing Partnership has variously dismissed that them um, invalid. Yes, 
The respectful compromise would be to introduce a form of legal self-identification for gender identity for trans people while clarifying that this does not change someone's sexual purpose of the Equality Act. It doesn't, though. It literally it doesn't. It doesn't change it. It openly says the bill does not make change to the public policy of the 2010 Equality Act. I don't know what shit they're talking about. I really don't know. The, the, I, oh, the opening was it as an easy organisation. Them lying isn't really a massive fucking surprise, is it? It's just bullshit. Going on from that, and now we'll get on to the next part. It's just a mess. It's just it's just a fucking mess at the moment. Uh, Starmer 16 is too young to change legal gender. Obviously, lovely BBC. Let's see what you said. 52. Uh, there we go. The provision in Scotland, in particular. Uh, the age reduction to 16, in particular, um, the rejection of our amendment in relation to the Equalities Act. So in but principle, across the whole of the mm. area, I think we should recognise the law, and I think we need a respectful debate that recognises. Um, it's a politician that. It's, it's a politician answer that isn't really an answer. That are being made at the moment. This is just treated as a political football from start to finish, and I don't think that actually. <laughs> But it disproportionately helps trans people and like non-binary people, so it's not really political football when it actually fucking helps people. It's the thing that annoys me. It's like, it's like oh, it's political football. Have you read anything about it? Have you done much research about it? You know that like, it's not. It's generally trying to help people. Can't is the cause of anyone. I'm and sure. and we're and that but but that's why also I think people want oh, to really fucking gr gremlin in chief, Laura Greensburg. Really, what your position is, rather than having modernise sort of the legislation to take out the indignity. But do you therefore not? back this happening at 16 it sounds to me that's what you, what you are saying you would not agree that you are old enough at the age of 16. no i don't i don't think you are you don't think you are at 16. Uh, okay that's clear very no trans people come out much younger than that as we've seen in studies beforehand which is why i was working my own research document at the moment um uh, yeah the UK Labour leader voiced concerns about Scottish government reforms, the process citing a potential impact on UK wide equalities laws. However, he stopped short of backing a challenge to Hollywood legislation, something the UK ministers are considering. The SNP's Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, says any move to block the bill passed by SNPs would be an outrage. The Scottish government has said it will vigorously contest any challenge. So, Raoul Lim and Joan Bill, Ms. Vito. Uh, let's have a look at that. Yeah. The only recognition reform bill passed by SMPs removes the, the need for people to be get a medical diagnosis for, of gender dysphoria before starting to change the process. We know that because not all trans people go through gender dysphoria. It also drops the age limit to 16 and cuts the amount of time the process takes from two years to a matter of months. Um, three months, well, you get, get it, three months, and then you review the end in another three months. But you also beforehand need to have shown that you have some, in some way been non-gender conforming. Um, Scottish Labour supported the reforms uh, and almost all of it. Oh, that's quite interesting. So Scottish Labour aren't, um, I'm saying that, no one likes Keir Starmer. I don't like Keir Starmer. Uh, but so Keir told, oh, so as well, the BBC saw on Sunday with Laura Koonsberg, I have concerns. What's that? Press on whether is that another thing we are. The Scottish Labour has tabled an unsuccessful amendment that sought to clarify the application of UK by the quality laws, because obviously now it's different uh, in both. Previously argued that the age of legal cap capacity in Scotland was already 16, and that should be no different when. Oh, that's quite. That's different. Oh, because they are kind of matching it. It is. In a way, is Scotland kind of more uh, separating themselves from England, which again, I'm for an independent Scotland. So I think that's a good, that is an interesting move. As the Keir also told the programme, respect for debate was needed on this issue and said he, yeah, but it's, it's a debate among politicians, not only being medically certified. Uh, so as the clarifies position, the modernised legislation, take out the indignity. What are the, what are the indignity? Oh, yes. The uh, Queen of the Turfs. Uh, the UK government is causing challenge in legislation. That really pissed off the Scottish. That was warming to make a referendum more, which I'm kind of, I am kind of for in respect. For ministers to examine the potential legal impact on the bill of the rest of the UK. So Keir would not be drawn on whether he would back a challenge. He's never fucking clear. 
Oh shit, there's quite a lot of this. We need... So yeah, the UK government, I love JK Rowling, that's very critical review from Scotland. UK Transport Secretary Mark Harper was also asked about the agenda. I mean, why? We need a detailed analysis. Mr. Harper told the BBC we are not proposing to make those changes for England, but what we would have to do is make a decision about whether that legislation impacts on legisla legislation elsewhere in the UK. One of those pieces of legislation is the Equalities Act, which again is out of date. Um, but medically transition, it normally means bottom surgery, not like before, which is Again, not especially the NHS at the moment, it's difficult to get. Mr. Harper added that transgender people have received abuse and their rights should be respected. Yeah, but women are also had concerns about risks of their safety. Uh, the minister also described criticism of author Jacob Rowling, who has condemned the legislation as unfair. But those risks, concerns about the safety, are mostly unheard of. It's like three cases from like four years ago. Uh, so. And making it easier to legally change gender has been one of the most con uh, contentious issues to come before the Holy Royal Parliament. It has exposed sharp divisions within all major political parties and prompted the biggest ever rebellion in the SNP since the party took over. Those divisions within parties and underlined by Santos of Circus Starmer has now taken against extending the rights to switch genders at 16 and 17 years old. Obviously we know this already. So yeah, a lot of it is just the same. Oh, this happened as well. Got us out to Brian Cox, I love Brian Cox as well, 76, also spoke in favour of the legislation, but said he was unsure about, that's the thing, a lot of them are probably, a lot of them have come out and said like, we're for it, but not 16, which is, I think most of them, it's the stuck in the mind, you know, I don't know, 18, you were a kid before that, you know, I don't know, 18, you were a kid before that, but realistically not much changes. That kind of thing, so yeah, it's just, no one really knows where they stand because of this, and it's caused a lot of like issues. Oh yeah, that's one thing I've got. Oh yeah, what are the plans for gender reforms? Cherish trans kids. What is the current system? So I'll keep this in, but for the most part, we know why. No to self ID, energy sexes, people can't change. So that's kind of the main thing is that when people get um, when people get uh, what's the the gender identity certificate, but in England, because of the Equality Act, which again, it's more issues with the Equality Act, you actually change the sex. Which is funny because this is also, that is also incorrect. And they're all tabs. Uh, in theory, only a small number of people will be directly affected by any reforms, with the NHS estimating that gender people make up about 0.5% of the population, but we know that's increased now. Ireland made similar change in 2015, had granted an average 115 applications per year up to... That's the thing, there's a very small amount of people. Uh, they think it's been like a tidal wave of people that change their ID, it's not. Yeah, so this is a, uh, this is the kind of the meat and bones one. We've also got a uh, Richard Sunak as well, which cover it, end it, but yeah, it's... And I'm interested in this one as well. So, Nicholas Sturgeon's trans law is constitutional mischief, not another in the culture war. It is. Telegraph again, or Torograph, is very much doing a culture war narrative. In the war about sex and gender, the two sides agree about and only one thing. Stakes are high. It is about who each person is and how this can be determined. So the fire of risk or atmosphere resembles that of Christian sex in 17th century England. Each believe they possess absolute truth and denounce on the other. One is back scientifically and the other one isn't. So there's not, unless one of them actually was like, I can, there's God, I can come over here and have a chat. Not a bit of a shy analysis. But a lot of people don't read the science in it. Another aspect of those past struggles was that they often divided England and Scotland. Yeah. We all know that crap. There are echoes of all this in Nicola Sturgeon's Scottish Gender Recognition excuse me, Reform Bill. Some of her bill's abbreviation, GRR, conveys the angry mood in her mind. The First Minister, now you are putting your own precision, per, per, perception of her agency onto it. That's very weird. That's very sub... Uh, yeah. That's very sub... Uh, that's some subversion going there in your text. Uh, 
Uh, in doing so, Miss Sturgeon has deliberately thrown down a challenge to the Conservative government in London. Fucking too right. No one else is standing up to them. Starmer's bay standing up to them as it is. He's starting to slip on the polls as well. It's a twat. Uh, identity issues like religious ones are extremely tricky for laws and politics. They are deeply felt conceptually difficult and because they often cut across party lines, neatly hard to manage. Using rough and tumble language politics isn't suitable for them. In important policy questions such as trade union reform or defence spending. Uh, trade union reform, definitely. Uh, MPs can happily trade bars without casually causing personal hurt. That's much harder of a gender question. But no, because the people that negatively impact aren't, people, aren't cisgender women, it's trans people. And the kind of... No one's at like... That's, actually, that's quite interesting. No, I haven't seen a single trans person interviewed about this at all. Well, it's all been like turfs, and like I've never actually heard no one's been interviewed, which I think is a bit of a fucking shock, to be honest. In the case of trans people, you are taking about talking about a small, vulnerable minority who often suffer rising abuse during such controversies. Ah, so what Telegraph are saying? All this abuse is becoming because of because of Nicola Sturgeon, not because you know we don't actually look after them as a society. Which don't you know we saw in the police records um that violence and trans people is just increasing and it's generally fucking terrifying um on the side many women feel threatened by the idea that men can receive a gender recognition certificate merely by self self-identifying as 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 women uh that's what you are throwing out the much rigorous provisions test because previously, well, yeah, again, though, like, it's a test in a failing system that's difficult to pass because the system's failing. And it's not only fault of their own, it's literally because the Tories. Um, and again, it's, oh, again, it doesn't really go over it. Fucking... Just as, uh, as Miss Sturgeon may be spoiling for the fight, so many of the Conservative ministers say they have never received just a big post bag as the opposing GRR. Their sounding of public opinions tell the same story. Then there's the, there's the added joy for Conservatives of, of discomforting Labour from Sir Keir Starmer's down. That's the thing that was quite, that's quite interesting is that this whole idea of like basically trans rights on both sides isn't a big issue. It just isn't a big issue. It was shown in the polling with the Conservative elect, like leadership election. It was very minor. No one really cared that much. There's making a big nothing burger, which one of these news organizations are. So then oh, you're making like, trans people worse. Like, no, it's you, fucking you guys actually are. So, so yeah, with that, uh, resist the. So, yeah. In Scotland, Labour put down critical amendments to the GRR, but then when they failed, voted for it. Yeah, too right. So over this is temptations, any move any move whose main motivation was political or backfire or deserve to do so. This is Mr. Ozen's mistake, the government should not mirror it. Not really, because it's not political it probably is part of political, but it's also it's it benefits Scottish people. So the question confronting which you see that's government, the unelected Prime Minister, uh, is important but quite narrow. It is not mustn't the SNP be prevented from producing sex sex change madness. It is, does the GRE exceed the right of devolved legislator by enacting a provision that would have a material adverse impact on the operation of the law throughout the United Kingdom? And I think the answer to that second question is yes, the government's uh, clear remedies to invoke Section 35, Scotland Act 1998, that would not kill the bill outright, but would force the Scottish, Scottish government to negotiate with a London alteration, which would make it compatible with the Act, the Scotland would probably go tell you to go fuck yourselves. Section 35 has never been used, but they neither did the article I got us out of Brexit. Uh, some who do not like the GR GRR bill nevertheless think it should not be. They used to expect the fuss is exaggerated because only a small number of trans people seek GREs. The Scottish government estimates is 250-300 a year. Uh, the cynical ones argue that it would be cleverer to let the GRR collapse under the weight of its own contradictions, dropping all the blame into Nicola Sturge's lap. Uh, I, I don't think, I think well, the Tories just expected to go backfire and then them getting in power, even though they, it, it would just be Scottish Labour that get in power instead. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit, yeah. There's a wise more to help the government than to hinder it. The Scottish Parliament wants a big scope, yeah. 
It's because of its constitutional importance that the government almost certainly will invoke it next week. Oh, okay, we'll be following this then. Because it is a constitutional issue, not, despite the GRR's content of sex and gender, uh, and gender one, the minister in charge will be the Scottish Secretary, Alistair Jack. I gather there are no European countries in which different gender rules apply in different parts of the state. Uh, we may discover here in Britain that the question of like, what defines a man and woman has uh, effects of saying that. Though. You guys can't define the persuasions that they can only be married in uniform and national system. In any event, the evidence that the GR, GR does indeed have adverse effects on the area of the United Kingdom law is strong. So, yeah, but the Telegraph seems to think that basically it'll collapse in itself and basically fuck over Nicola Sturgeon, which I don't think it will, to be honest. That's my hot take right now. I don't think it will at all. And it's very unlikely to. So, what's the next one? Uh, it's. So it is an irony since trans campaigners invoke equality that the, that the clash comes because of, of quality law. But the, but the kind of clash has been pushed by Telegraph, The Times, J.K. Rowling, LGB Alliance. It's very much a not being pushed by... It's not being pushed by like trans equality law. It's because it's been, it's just everyone's so fucking like, stuck in the turf brain they're actually not willing to do anything. <sighs> it's just, yeah. The key piece of UK legislation is Labour's Equality Act 2000 again. According to Dr. Michael Foran, a public law lecturer in the University of Glasgow and a new paper for policy exchange, the purpose of the Equality Act, you are either male or female, but cannot be both, and your sex is defined under the Act by biology. But then the biology is a lot more difficult, as been discussed in the last decade. Yeah. Uh, so an example Dr. Foran gives, suppose a biological woman with a GRC as a man is issued under the GRR is pregnant, can he any uh, any longer invoke the Equality Act protection from discrimination as a pregnant woman? I keep reading these articles, and I read these articles, and it's very clear they haven't actually read the fucking bill, and it pisses me off every time I read it. It really, it really pisses me off. We've gone over this. We've fucking gone over this so many fucking times. I, like, like it's not, like, it literally, oh, I just... Yeah. So basically... Yeah, it hasn't read how a bishop does not make changes to the public policy. Like, it's literally saying it doesn't change it. It's not going to change it. It's just, yeah. It's it's fucking people at like the Times. Uh, oh, it's the Telegraph, not the Times. Oh, so, I think it was. I know it's the Telegraph. The Times are normally ones that do the tough ones as well. Um, that are making issues out of it. And it's just, yeah, it's making everything such a fucking shit show. But she's seen that's concerned about impact of Scotland's gender recognition. I'm not sure it's just going to be the same beforehand. Yeah, there's nothing. Just about everything going on. So, to summarise it, um, news articles don't really, I don't really seem to have fully addressed or read what the actual bill is. Uh, that's quite one. That's one part. Uh, they don't understand uh, gender and sex really that much, showing the science behind it. Just more conflating stuff they've learned from society and social and uh, social roles. Not moving much past that. And uh, don't really seem to get much thought, and don't really seem to one actually talk about ask trans people what the actual what they think it is. They, it's about them. The victory. There's uh, some quotes like it's what trans people think, but no actually interviews or anything like that. So. But has this been, it's like, it's probably had been pushed to create a political divide. I agree, that that's definitely part of it. But also at the same time, it undoubtedly supports trans people. Because something like this has always been, similar to this has also been passed in Canada. So it's one of those things where it's like, it has been demonstrated somewhere else. So there is that, it's just, yeah. The UK media has created a shitstorm around this when none needn't exist. It's just putting t pushing t tensions even more. So, yeah, there is that. But as I always keep fucking saying, trans rights to human rights, treat them like fucking human beings. Trans people aren't going around hiring people. That's just that's a scaremonger and bullshit. But yeah, so I was.
the wash room, book done in as usual. Peace. See ya. But yeah, uh, it just fucking annoys me. It annoys me so fucking much. Uh, oh, it's a. I might be leaving. Oh. No, no one's, no, no one's on. Back in a sec. I will be back. Eventually, got to postponed for the to next week. So, oh, I can have a bit of a bit of a chilled longer stream. It's almost been at the god, it's gone quick. It's almost been an hour. That's the one thing I found doing streaming now. It goes quicker, which I'm actually starting to enjoy quite a lot. Um, so yeah, it's it's, it's been become quite fun. Oh, some more, yeah, rather Twitter as usual. Yep, so I'm doing off onto distance. Uh, a couple other things I want to, want to do. Um, we'll wash it, peace. Did them burns debate. I'm going to quickly have a look as well. It's weird, my, I don't, yeah, I don't plan much stuff as much as I used to. Mostly because it's not, I think, most stuff. When I first started my channel, I feel like I don't know me, different mindset and everything. There's always something going on in the world. And obviously there still is, there's still stuff happening. But there's also a... Um, the others are the old Andrew Tate stuff, but it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like, I know the law, but bringing it all in. Like, I, I wouldn't trust myself with shit like that. Especially not now, it's just a small channel. I might do sooner, so I say that, I might do it in a week or two, but... I feel a lot more, I kind of need to be a bit more kind of prepared before going in, like, talking about stuff like that. Definitely something that I see as more important. But, yeah. But, yeah, it's just a lot of... Yeah. There's obviously lots of things you can... Not really. I think, yeah, I think I'll do what I was planning to do, which is a wash hit piece. But. Or not do our wash hit piece. What she wants that. Here we go, toilet.
Time for that. Alright, let's drop off the kids. Well, I'm back. Let's sort out what we're doing next. Pull it up. Oh my. Annoying. It seems every time I seem to refresh, it makes the page. So. Oh, 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 I think what I was do. Um, that was right. I must have got strikes, but that will be done. G course. But today, a bit more of a ch oh, the first bit wasn't so chill. Uh, chill rest of the video. So what I know from this Bosch Tate, I think Bosch cover thing you go with it. I'm pretty sure we did because on the thing. Uh, caught on, on a stream, but um, yeah, 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 ready. Uh, at, at the moment, I probably heard in my oh. life. Okay, it's got it skipped quite a lot. I don't know why it skipped quite a lot. Yep. This isn't going to be part of probably the segment that I made, but the left is very fractured at the moment, like very fractured. A lot of like dumb fucks on the left that aren't left. Um, oh, what was it? What's the name of the content creator that I'm going to get? He's a kid ology in her. I don't know. I'm not following that drama because there's so much law to it. You're a bit disingenuous, you miss out a lot of stuff. And the Nefty Signifier comes on and literally just, like, what reacts to it, but then cuts out people he doesn't like. Like, he cuts out like a Vosh egg hunt for somebody, like, because he doesn't want to associate with them, which is a bit funny. It's just shit like that. It's a kid's ology, it's a live channel? Yeah, because the react video is like three hours long. Uh, the actual video itself is over an hour, which I'm fine with watching. But considering I haven't opened up by much on stream yet, and I am not caught up as much. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to go into that one. But I thought I would still go into this one. I get up. So, oh. For some reason it's cut off but my screen. Um there we go. Oh, I've got from but Vosh Vosh's endless dishonesty confession of a former fan. I from what I'm I have heard like he's a bit of a tanky um and um, for the most part, former fan, I don't think, I don't think he probably was a former fan. Right, let's get speed. Start on 1.25, it was very easily legible, put to 145, it is, it is a 45, 40, yeah, almost a 45 minute video. And if I do this, I probably won't do, actually no, I might do it depending on what time it is after this, but yeah, let's get into it. Actually no, knowing what the time is now, this is probably my last segment of today. Because I work tomorrow, I'm nice and fresh, but then tomorrow I do that and I do the Luna Research stream later. I'm still collecting sources for that at the moment. Yeah. Bring myself for it. So, got another takedown Vosh video from someone that's claiming to be a former fan. Not sure about that. From what I've heard in the grapevine, Bit of tanky vibes from him, so this would be. I think this would be quite in, interesting. Interesting, interesting watch. And there's also I can't remember. There's someone else that comes on that, if I am right, is the. Is it like the tanky Joker guy that came on? Like a very long, well, not a very long time, but a while ago. But I thought you know, I went to watch it, poke holes in it. Yeah, 
be fun. Get into it. So it's one point two five. If it's even if it's easily legible, like how I speak, I'll speed up even more. But let's go. Vosh is a self-identified socialist political streamer who online. In answer to this controversy, Vosh's fans and Vosh himself have in turn taken to calling the criticisms of Vosh Vosh Derangement Syndrome, or VDS for short. Yeah, because a lot of them were literally just baseless accusations, a bit like Professor Flowers people that can't attack in Vosh, but even though she was un obviously unknown in part even though yeah, she could all white colonizers I find kinda of weird, but also the same part is the if she was to run down her ideo ideological route, at the end of it is basically <laughs> genocide. Countless videos have been made criticizing Vosh to this point. But I think I have a bit of a different perspective on the issue of Vosh compared to these other videos, because I used to be a huge Vosh fan myself. For a period of around four to five months. Doubt. I watched most of the videos he released on YouTube basically every single day. Before school, after school, wherever, I listened to his life takes, his political takes, and yes, his media takes. I even watched a good half or so of his five hour long rankings of Dark Souls bosses. What I'm trying to communicate is how much I respected Bosch's opinion. I never adored the guy, I wasn't one of the fans that seemingly spent all day on the internet defending him, but for a good while I thought he was pretty mm. without exception. I like Bosch, he has some, some weird takes on some things, but for the most part... Smartest, most principled person on the left. And that's exactly what he was. I, I saw, I, it was amusing the you on misogyny, but it was still... A it was pretty fucking dumb. That's everyone to think. Can you give some examples of creators to the left who are good? Who's to the left of me? I don't even know what that means anymore. Apparently people who are more to the left. Okay, if it's just speeded up like this, we're gonna have to go back to normal, because it's just... It's just there. Like revolutionary barbers who have no idea how any of these political systems work, and sand authoritarian governments. Are they to the left of me? Does it make... Like, are people who defend China to my left? What does that mean? Either? This... Is the laughing tanky guy. The jo The laughing tanky. The joker tanky guy. Um... Are you sure it is? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's. Yeah. The thing that is this guy. He basically didn't understand about. Um. Was it, when it was. Oh, what was it? The, the guy basically came out being like pro USSR. And it was very much a tanky. Even though. So this guy's also the tanky then. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, everything I do is in the pursuit of what I think is the best path towards socialism. The fastest and most effective path possible. That I, in my opinion, yeah. Oh, Vosh has lost, like, a fair bit of weight, like, fair play well, to him. It's not entirely surprising that people do think so highly of Vosh. Vosh's speech is articulate, his voice is strong and commanding. Oh, quite, literally, he's got quite a deep voice. His politics do overall seem to be pretty progressive to those that aren't very educated when it comes to politics, like I was. And the warning signs, like the fact that he openly admits that he's a lazy person. By my nature, I am a lazy person. He's, he's not saying like he's a slob, he's just like naturally has a point of have a bit more kick in his step to do stuff. I need ADHD as well, so I don't fucking blame uh, him. Like, I have my ADHD as well, I, and I'm like suffering from fatigue. I can kind of understand that. I am, uh, I'm, just, I'm just work shy. Or the fact that he spends much of the time in his reactions to criticisms of him, distractedly talking to chat or playing a video game or not even watching most of the video. Or the fact that he proudly seems to be basically all of his research straight from Wikipedia. Are to many politically immature. Mix Wikipedia is decent, uh, but you have to follow the links. If I see somewhere that's like the links like not working, then I would go myself and go look sure, for it. Will seem not as warning signs, but as beacons. No one could be this impossibly confident in themselves unless they were really right about almost everything, right? This or very autistic, like myself. This incredible confidence makes him such an attractive person to so many politically unsure vaguely left-leaning people as I was. But what specifically is the harm with Vosh then? Are Vosh's critics from the left really the ones with VDS? And why did- Well, most people like if you signify Thought Slime, DJ Mule, that kind of leftist and tankies are for the most part quite harmful, don't really understand. They will have this personal perception about how to reach Kind of their end goal in society, and most of it is involved with some quite horrible things. Again, like the kind of protest of flowers, kind of like making like a black ethno state, which is still ethno states are still like, inherently wrong. Um, I think what else? What else you got to think of? 
And a lot of it is very borderline tank, well, no, is tanky behavior, which also is pretty fucked up. Um, and most of it is like, kind of like, also like the less vanguard aspect where it's like people are too stupid enough to govern themselves and it's like you thinking you know what's best for all these people is a bit fucking cringe in a vanguard sense which i know vosh has seemed to have moved away from that's one of those cringe like i don't the whole we create the vanguards and start the revolution i do find also quite cringe but he seems to have moved away from it this is yet another video about this guy really need to be made well the thing is i want to actually talk about something broader than just also, this like it's the second one, I think. This is this guy's second video of Vosh. And to get an idea of what I mean, let's start by watching Vosh's video. This is how I want to build socialism. I won't dive into the entire 25 minute video. But this is what a three year old video now. It's it's stands as like obviously sort of socialist on that, but it stands as so how to implement to have changed. Long story short, Vosh's main argument for how to achieve socialism is by building support for left leaning politicians by voting for them, so that these politicians can begin to make socialist positions more popular. So that when a revolution yeah, like is apparently inevitable comes thanks to climate change, enough people will support leftist politics to make a successful revolution possible. The problem is, if we look at history, any democratic attempts to establish a socialist government have throughout history been crushed. Just look at the lengths finance capital went to sabotage Bernie, who was really just a social democrat and not even a democratic socialist in both 2016 and 2020. We also saw the Labour so, Party... But like if, if he was openly a socialist, he wouldn't have got in. ...deliberately sabotage its own candidate in Jeremy Corbyn, to an even greater extent throughout his tenure. Yeah, that's the true. Of the opposition. Vosh, Vosh isn't a go vote. Like, partly is, but not. The that. closest to a successful democratic socialist attempt in history in Salvador Allende's Chile ended up with Allende committing suicide as his government was couped. Even if just a social democratic system somehow managed to be implemented in America, this would actually most likely prevent a full socialist revolution from happening. No, but Vosh supports. Not most of the FBI, to, but Vosh is kind of a revolution one. It will happen, but at some point, and he's just all like, Vosh is more like to make the conditions right for it. And yeah, he's not like a destiny. Just don't vote. That was, yeah, that's fucking stupid. Like, you're, you're trans people get legislated out of existence. Just go vote. It's like, no, you have to, like, in some cases, not all cases, but some cases, you have to violently resist your oppressors. Climate change or not. That's because reforms under social democracy have historically tended to placate people within a country from wanting any more dramatic changes. You can't really have a revolution if enough people are already happy enough with society as it is. No social democratic country has ever had anything close to a revolution for that reason. FDR was a perfect example of social democracy in action. He put through bills and reforms that probably helped the country for the better, but these reforms yeah. also helped prevent an actual revolution by placating people just enough that they weren't willing to actually but say you say like oh they're just about help people. He his stuff was like quite revolutionary. It was more the fact that the whole like you're communist and all that kind of stuff came in that batted it down. So it was it was more of FDR's opponents watered down his his actual policies and the policies himself being very watered. Revolt and put in place more permanent concrete measures to ensure their well being. Similarly, numerous countries across Europe after the rise of the USSR themselves enacted social democratic policies as an act of explicitly preventing revolution. And frankly, I don't really want to implement <laughs> leftist policies in this country through fucking executive action. Is that really the way we want to do it? Now, because implementing them back then would have, was definitely the, if you become communist, you're going to have a uh, U USSR ambassador come under, and next thing you know, you're getting fucking cooed by them, and you become under the thumb of the USSR. I'm not saying I didn't want Bernie to win, of course I did, but we have to recognize the dude would have been working with a handicap. But doing this for executive action, just the president unilaterally doing this stuff? Uh... It's a bad precedent, and the next president can just undo it. But again, again, this guy's using like two, three year videos, which is like, sure you take his like more recent stances. People, like my politics is, my politics, like, I'm more like in line with socialism, uh, like socialism's uh, a socialist. I would say I'm a socialist now. But three years ago, I would probably say I was definitely a sock dem, not really buying into kind of socialism at all. Uh, so a lot can change in three years. I, I, I basically just read more stuff, and my friends convinced me more. Do it. Anything you do via executive action can just be undone via executive action. Whereas if you have it pushed through House and Congress and so on and so forth, it is much, much harder to undo that stuff. Much harder. The reason FDR passed more executive actions than any other president in history is that his Congress became increasingly obstructionist over his time as president. After a brief period of success, he had to pretty much go past the capitalist Congress to get almost everything done. 
Many of the rights granted at the time have been reversed or lessened, and the same has occurred in Europe as well. But this isn't just because it was executive action. The fact is that as long as a democracy exists, that has originally been built off of the interests of the capitalist class as America. This guy is basically, we need a full violent revolution, throw everything, destroy everything into chaos, be borderline, an uh, borderline anarchy, which would then probably breed authoritarian. That's the thing. It would breed author authoritarianism. It wouldn't really bring back this glorious revolution this guy thinks it will. Europe has, any change that might occur will be incredibly slow and painful and able to be reversed at basically any time. Far more importantly, though, than what Vosh says is what's missing from Vosh's analysis of how he actually wants to build socialism. What happens after the Yay! It seems like this guy liked Vosh, the found like his older con- I, I find some of his older con a bit cringe. Uh, and then he's gone into it and he's been like, oh, I hate Vosh now. But like, but you like Vosh now, but not like his past content. Like, surely you prefer the person he is now to back then? Evolution Does that make sense? Occurs. He doesn't at all talk about this in the video. And the reason... <laughs> Talking about how you'd violently overthrow a government isn't always the best. Well, not, I'd say violent, like, if not violent, but like, internet a revolution, you wouldn't normally say that directly online? Because, uh, you know... TOS. The Vosh doesn't actually go into what he would envision a post-revolution society to be is because I No, he no he has. He openly has the whole idea of like like socialism. He talks about how um co-ops would operate things. But I think what Vosh's discussion is more is now is again I wanna that's another I'm gonna yeah, sidetrack, talk about later. Um but no, he's been like he's given the inklings what it would be. I would argue like co-op heaven basically which needs more in research socialism in the first place this picture is a perfect summation of Vosh's lack of any rigor um uh, when it comes to his understanding of actually existing so why do oh things gone to complete things in the way so i can't read it or i can just mute it and so i can actually read it Come on, 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 come on. So why, yes, I do oppose of American sanctions and also support Cubans demanding uh, more from their government. How could you tell? No, people in non-Western non countries can't hold protests. I literally, I literally CIA, you are CIA. I've been touching grass. Can I get some info on a Cuba be given? Well, yeah, because was like, one of the Castro was... Like, was, it was basically an author, it was communism that's authoritarian regime at the same, same time. It wasn't a democracy by any chance. A communist society fundamentally needs to be a democratic society, else it isn't communist. ...understanding of actually existing socialist experiments and researching in general. Notice how Like what? Socialist experiments in, i.e. we have a supreme ruler whose children then become the leader after they die. A bit like, you know, a monarchy. Now, according to the timestamp of the tweets, Vosh asked for research about Cuba, then spent less than an hour, it could have been as li little as literally a couple minutes, actually researching the issue, before then tweeting out the absolute gold standard blue dog democrat Nancy Pelosi talking point of how the embargo is bad, yes, but what about the poor people not getting enough from their government now to be fair Vosh has been oh yeah like, there's a mix like governments uh US sanctions have fucked Cuba over then Cuba was a fuck Cuba. <laughs> like like having a, a authoritar an authoritarian regime hurts people on the topic of Cuba is actually not completely terrible it's a somewhat fair analysis yeah because these protests weren't like anti like communist protest they were like anti we want actually want democracy protest and like literally approach of criticizing Cuba's methods without actually in any way analyzing why a state like Cuba might function the way it does in the first place. If Vosh looked with clear eyes at the history of imperialism in South America, he would know that in Cuba, before Batista, the winning candidate of Cuba's so-called elections was always a puppet of the U.S. But then the person, Castro, not directly, this is there's definitely more research, this would be very, uh, might be a bit of a space of hot take, but Castro was definitely a USSR dog. They gave him fucking loads of money. Like he, they, he was backed by the USSR. So you can't. Oh, it's not. It's not an American puppet. Like don't get me wrong. Americans fucked up shit. Hundred percent. Just like in every so-called democracy in South America. I don't get. I, I, his point seems to be kind of lost here. 
where it's like I haven't done much research. The US always overthrow people like that. Therefore, this revolution, well, the revolution, protest is USA backed. And in many cases since then, it's well. difficult to implement. That would simply turn Cuba into democracy as Americans conceive of it again and completely let. Say it with me. Communism isn't communism if democracy isn't involved. Let freedom press and capitalist parties exist. The US would have funded fake newspapers and fake politicians, and those politicians would have gone on to win, and Cuba would have been turned more or less back into exactly what it was under Batista. Cuba does have a democracy of its own, where only people in the Communist Party, i.e. people who support Support or claim to support socialism can actually run a bit like china yes that's the problem it's not free and fair election when the people picked are picked by the government to run that's not how a fucking democracy works it might sound more ideal to just do a socialism through elections that allow all viewpoints including capitalists to have their say but as i've explained already it's never happened once in history you can't have a socialist society that has the classic party range from the Yes, because then one party like basically becomes like very authoritarian and military overthrows the other one. You need to put safeguards in place so that doesn't fucking happen. And it's probably more likely to happen now if if you have like the oh yeah, it's long winded explanation, have the military somehow become kind of separated from it under kind of like civil servant control almost. Far left party to the far right parties that exist in so-called liberal democracies. Why would you ever allow a pro-capitalist party to exist in a society that supposedly wants to eliminate capitalism? The only well, no, you still have a party that's like probably pro-market, but just not pro-capitalism in that sense. The answer is that you would prefer capitalism if a so-called democracy... Well, it's like, oh, there's like one party where like, you know, you get free healthcare, or my pay more taxes, like better transport, another one where it's like, let's get rid of that and privatize it. You most likely not going to vote for it. It is true that people don't. If you have an educated population base, they should. Democracy voted for it, then socialism. Socialist states have one party because the goal of the socialist state is. It's not. Oh, it's painful. How can China's communist? No, it's not. It's fucking capitalist. The of socialism. There is no room for capitalist parties that are against that goal. They're kind of. Yeah, but what about having like more than one socialist party? This isn't. This guy's within the party itself, but the end goal must be to building socialism uh what is this what's in the comment what did you say uh great video great video going into further depth from, um, for about washing tankies and defense tankies and response to street this guy is open this guy's a tanky and by sound of it he's a fucking stupid tanky here's another example of vasha's seemingly willful ignorance about actually existing socialism in a debate that he had against a youtuber named fellow traveler how can a society be authoritarian and socialism when socialism is democratic is a photo traveler that helps with them then? So it must right, be him. Control over means production. It's completely and socialism, right. socialism is social ownership of the means of production. It is a fucking jerky tanky. It's annoying now because this is way too fast. Uh, to get to a point to where. Yeah, apparently, from what I've heard of this, um, this guy apparently has quite a lot of involvement in this video and other videos about Vosh. So he's basically, it's him being butthurt. On him basically coming across being fucking insane because this guy is against um planned economy which don't don't fucking work you need to have market but market is how people are kind of like to lie at the moment uh so yeah where you have people as direct worker owners requires a great deal of societal evolution and advancements that the bolsheviks simply could not reach they were an agrarian peasant society where you had small-scale production petty bourgeois mindsets and small-scale production reproduces capitalist economic relations not later on they weren't they fucking rapidly industrialized as you saying before that this was just the bolsheviks like they were around in like the 30s like fucking russia would change a lot by them this is a debate i remember watching when i was still a big vosh fan and i was taken aback at this point. and now he's friends with fellow traveler which is why the video is coming out Rather than criticize Traveler for what he said, rather than provide counterpoints and debate the facts, which is what Vosh talks about all the time, is debating the facts, showing evidence, Vosh just says excuses. That was all the master debater had to say in response. There is another debate with Fellow Traveler. 
that he hasn't included. That's more recent than a year, not like three, four years old. If Fosh was educated on this time period, he could have said something in response to this, right? Like dishonest or not, he could have said something. If you're rooting your like political philosophy in the aesthetic of like adopting the positions of some long dead person rather than a material analysis of the world that you live in, then you are an aesthetically oriented leftist and you're not. Yeah, basically, I'm Malcolm Marx less learning Marx Leninism is a fucking cringe move. And you're not really, it's not really an ideology, it's more just kind of shoehorned by like it's basically what like Stalin used to justify his actions. You're not doing anyone any service. Vosh apparently thinks like Maoist as well. Important. But at the same time, applying real-world material analysis to the USSR is just excuses. Bosch is more than happy to say whatever fits best for him. Well, yeah, because people defending planned economies that failed and atrocities committed by the USSR isn't, yeah, it kind of, like, oh, people, you know, it's like, people can defend the USSR, like, you need to be, to material analysis, like, yeah, that shit didn't work. Is how it works. Why it doesn't work? It's like, you haven't found any evidence. It's like, no, he has. And there's the fact that they no longer exist in themselves is kind of evidence. Him in the moment. When demonizing tankies, material analysis is good. A rambling, incoherent 45 minutes worth of material analysis is also apparently really important in explaining why Biden is putting kids in cages. But when a Marxist Leninist like fellow traveler uses material analysis to explain the conditions in the USSR at the time, he didn't. He basically, oh, it's an old debate as well. It's not the new one. The new one makes him look so much more worse. Like, oh, let's just listen excuse, to it. Bosch is pretty well known for his opinions on Marxist Leninists at this point, which he generally more or less just calls tankies now. You know of any non. Because they are, they're very pro, most of them, most of them, more than all of them, defend the USSR. Tanky ML channels? No, I, I don't, I'm sorry. Yet he's also shown time and time again that he knows nothing about Marxist Leninism by claiming, laughably, that Marxism Leninism doesn't even exist. Marxist Leninism doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's basically what Stalin made up to kind of like justify his beliefs that some. It's literally a bastardization of Marxism. Into whatever state defending authoritarian justifying bullshit it needs to. to this guy can define it, fucking go for it. But if he doesn't, he's kind of showing that, yeah, it doesn't really exist. The interests of state leaders. It doesn't mean anything, so it can mean anything. This is such a ridiculous, delusional thing to say on so many levels. Marxism Leninism at its basics simply argues for a vanguard party to seize power on behalf of the proletariat and establish. Basically saying the ref basically yeah, it justifies the Russian Revolution. <laughs> um, that's what basically it does. To one party, yeah, because they defend what Mao did as well. The state called the dictatorship of the proletariat. The state would control the means of production, suppress opposition, counter revolution, and the bourgeoisie in order to create an eventual communist society. But that's the thing, though. The communist society never comes. It doesn't come. And him saying this is basically like it's not even inherently Marxist. I oh the whole like, oh yeah the the proletariat like dictatorship, but if it's dictatorship, it's not Marxist. That would be classless and stateless. Countless millions of people in the 20th century from all around the world fought and died for freedom from capitalism as well as from colonial and imperialist rule by the West. To varying success. Under what about colonialist and imperial rule by the USSR? Explicit ideology of Marxism Leninism. It very much exists. And it's not just a justification for authoritarian states either. Marxism Leninism is a scientific, realist response to the material reality of trying to establish and maintain. Is he saying realist isn't realism? If not, that he's demon. Just no, it would be correct. A realist defends Russia invading, uh, Russia invading Ukraine, and then provoked by NATO. So that would make sense. Maintain a socialist state under the current world dominance of imperialist capitalism. So basically, in order to make a socialist state, you don't make a socialist state. You just make a dictatorship. Okay. This is not hard to understand you. if you read about the history of socialist struggle. Read about what capitalism will do to maintain its power and read about what people on the ground in the third world had to do and still will have to do to fight to establish and maintain a socialist society. But Vosh is obsessed with doubling and tripling down on this idea 
even though many of his own audience have criticized him for it by pointing out the same basic facts that I am. More on this later. Of course, while he's very fond of I'll support him. Marxist okay. Leninists, he at the same time loves to tokenize Marxist Leninists like Is he just showing like Vosh clips not using the audio? By claiming that they inspired him to get into politics in order for Vosh to give himself this veil of radicalism. Literally got into leftism because of the Black Panther Party. The assassination of Fred Hampton's on a bookshelf to my left, that's still, like, to me, the foundational text that I used that got me into this whole political scheme. He gets explicitly called out for just how he tokenizes radical leftists to make himself look more radical than he is in this next clip. Wait, they're like fact-checking me with text. If you were consistent, you'd be deriding the Panthers for being tankies instead of tokenizing them for your bullshit argument. How the fuck am I token- How am I tokenizing the Black Panther Party by saying they fought for racial equality? What the fuck? That is- Yeah, so generally weird. like- what the f That is a very strange accusation. That's a really fucking strange statement. This is another one of- uh, just listen to how condescendingly Vosh V talks about down to Yo, how came is a tanky, and Iraqi about US imperialism in Iraq. Please retweet this so more people know what a fraud and racist Vosh is. Just drop the facade and join it all right already. Famous, yeah, Jeremy's a fucking retard. And his hands bite it every single time, where he acts incredibly indignant at something a person says as if it's the most idiotic thing ever, without ever actually addressing the claim very that you can support a movement or a per- I mean tokenism partly in a racial sense, in which, for example, a business will promote a minority to make them- Or saying, I support the Black Panther Party, it got me into politics, isn't fucking tokenizing them. Like, you could also say at the same time, like, like, part of the reason why I probably got more on socialism is probably re like, studying a lot of Martin Luther King when I was and do my undergraduate. Then I'm saying Martin Luther, Martin Luther's like rhetoric and his kind of work, maybe in socialist. I'm not tokenizing Martin Luther King. Not the racial elements of like, of like it's factually framed for racial equality and also social equality. Person, while also tokenizing them by making them look less radical at the same time. And this clip goes on to perfectly show exactly how Vosh does that. That is a very strange accusation. Quality, not just socialism. Material conditions can mean fucking Panthers fought for racial equality by pursuing national liberation with a Marxist Leninist analysis such a Okay, yeah, so they're basically they're just whining about lesbians me. marching outside Okay, history and you are lucky Not really gonna comment on this last part as it's not relevant to the video as a whole Okay, so this guy's using confirmation bias, all right, okay I personally got Biden into office because otherwise Are you- his Hakeem from Iraq? Well, hey, listen, okay? We're gonna get Biden to get those troops out of Iraq, okay? Wait, did he already do that? We're gonna keep Biden from fucking bombing any more of your airports, okay? That's what we're gonna do. You're welcome, Hakeem. Does he not understand sarcasm? Like, obviously, Vosh is saying we're gonna get them out of it, but what? You want fucking Trump in office? That's definitely gonna like bomb more people. Like, Trump bombed more people than Obama did, like by far. True. When Vosh gets to the word Marxist-Leninist, his mouth suddenly spazzes out. He mumbles about how the video is complaining about him. Yeah, Marxist-Leninists are just fucking tankies. You advocate for dictatorship. A dictatorship where, like, it's the proletariat, but, like, what shape is it going to be? It's not democratic, no. Then it's like, well, you're suppressing everyone else, and it's not in the, that's not in the vanguard party. He skips past the fact that the Black Panthers were MLs without even addressing because he disagrees with it. He's just far too egotistical to admit his smear of them out. Fucking hell, this video is fucking painful. ...was just exposed in front of his audience. And, because... <laughs> and so he has to move on as fast as possible. And by doing so, he is of course doing the definition of political tokenization. He's doing the timeless act of co-opting radicalism and making it less radical. Just like neoliberals do with MLK, praising him as an inspiration. Okay. while completely ignoring how radical he actually was. I literally got into leftism because of the Black Panther Party. The assassination of Fred Hampton's on a bookshelf to my left, that's still... Just... Be... Yeah. Just be putting, like, because it's on Wikipedia doesn't always make it true. That's why I say, you know, read the links. Like, to me, the foundational text that I used that got me into this whole political scheme. Marxist-Leninism doesn't mean anything. 
doesn't. Bosch at least does acknowledge in the latest of his anti-Marxist Leninist videos recently released that the Black Panthers were also influenced heavily by Maoism, but that he still weirdly were also Marxist Leninists. And he also argues that he thinks they're different from regular people that call themselves Maoists. So when the Black Panther Party calls themselves Maoist, what do they actually mean? What are they referring to? Well, in their case, they were referring largely to organizational and revolutionary structures. Whereas in the case of regular people who call themselves Maoists, I interpret that as a defense of Mao, like as a leader. Yeah, which they, they do, they, they do do. Yes. The ideas of both following a Maoist revolutionary structure or supporting past socialist leaders, those are not two mutually exclusive ideas like he seems to be saying. No, that's not what he's saying. No, he's saying that people that like, use like Maoism from Mao, like they're not saying always oh, like Maoism is, is in like the actual like um uh political ideology. They say no, they're defending his fucking horrendous actions. Like is it, he did commit atrocities, they're defending the atrocities. Saying like, yeah, it's fine, like Mao, like all oh, praise fucking Mao, like that's kind of the point of it. Whereas like Marxist Leninism, people that describe themselves as Marxist Leninists defend the USSR, which, which was fucking, which was awful. <laughs> and he's also just wrong. Huey Newton saw Mao as a hero. He visited China and met with Zhu Enlai, one of Mao's closest allies. Fred Hampton also highly admired Mao, not to mention Lenin and Che and Kim Il-sung. Of course, if anyone in this day and age said that kind of stuff that Fred Hampton said about people like Mao, Bosch would instantly call them a tanky. He's just spouting a bunch of nonsense that isn't consistent. Saying you accept someone physical ideology, then we're saying like like have like a cult personality worship become is different. It's a different thing. It's like Marx Leninist again, reiterating this, I just said this a few seconds ago, use it to send the actions of someone. In terms of those specific actions, a lot of them are other than like like traveller, that defends upon the economy to start being awful. Um, doesn't really, and then goes on to kind of saying how the USSR's imperialist ambitions weren't really a thing and kind of ignore that. If you can say, I appreciate some aspects of Mao, but then I also disagree with some bits, that's more than what a fucking tanky would ever do. ...consistent at all with his opinions because like, it's just... Tanky's defending China now, it's about China not being... Yeah, it's defending systems that aren't communist. Like, USSR wasn't communist. China isn't communist. It's convenient in this moment when it comes to demonizing Marxist-Leninists and Maoists. What Vasha is basically trying to establish is that when there is any case where Marxist-Leninists or Maoists are seen as acceptable within the confines of what Vosh personally sees as acceptable, Vosh can just say, oh, but they're not the regular people Maoists or Marxist-Leninists who are just authoritarians or Mao defenders. Yeah, they're not tankies. Or whatever. He's openly said this kind of thing in the same clip where he said Marxism-Leninism doesn't mean anything. And frankly, I think a lot of the people who call themselves Marxist-Leninists that aren't lunatics probably just that doesn't even describe their ideology that well. So what he's basically saying is that his apparent political idols like Fred Hampton or Thomas Sankara were misguided about calling themselves You can no, you can follow them, but you don't like you don't fucking worship the ground they walk upon and say everything is correct. You still criticize them. MLs at all in the first place. They just weren't real MLs as he calls it. He realizes he can't just ignore that organizations like the Black Panthers are Marxist Leninist or Maoist, so he has to resort to just saying that they aren't actual Marxist Leninists. This is just an even more blatant form of tokenization than before. He's openly admitting that he's tokenizing them. He's doing the same thing as if no, he's, uh, he was confronted and okay, he's not. how MLK was a socialist. And then they would say, well, he wasn't- Basically, like he's saying that tokenism is they're taking a part of it, saying, oh, how much they liked him, how much they respected them. That's why he got into politics. But then ignoring a lot of their politics, but he's not. He's addressing it. He has addressed the, it. Uh, regular people socialists, like that Lenin guy or that- uh, I haven't watched it, but I, yeah, I want to- Copy in Vosh's commentary on this as well in my channel. Now, uh, in my description. Yeah, he wasn't a real socialist. The most amazing part is that Vosh claims he's tried to be conciliatory. Every single time, I I've, I've really tried to be conciliatory here. Every single time, I'm like, hey, you know, not all MLs are like this one, or 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 this one. Eventually, I have to draw the line. I think MLs are just like that, yeah. It's just a complete lie to say you've been. He says he's been conciliatory, but has still found that all ML to tankies, but in the same... It's like, what is it? Not all ML to tankies, but all tankies are, are ML. And yeah, but in the same conversation goes on to say that I don't, You need to get caught, like, it's like, you... Oh, it's... <laughs>
like, on materials analysis of like this thing, you need to provide context, you need to provide what video this in, what is the actual discussion that he's having right now. You're li again, he's literally just claim chimping him. Conciliatory by just writing off all of the many counters to your argument as not being real counters when they absolutely are. It's especially remarkable that a person as dishonest about his political beliefs as Vosh would be the one to say that socialists from... fought for socialism are the actual people who weren't actually of the political ideology they ascribe themselves to. It's just amazing how patronizing and how egotistical he is. But only now are we finally arriving at the best part of it all. In continuing his remarkable quest to say Marxism-Leninism doesn't exist, Vosh goes on to say maybe the single dumbest thing I think I've ever heard him say. Again, it's the fact that it's only, it's, um, um, it's only kind of used to kind of define and define, defend, again, like USSR and whatnot. The fact that people kind of attribute uh, understanding of it as then being projected onto other people doesn't really mean it does exist. It's like if you take a look at the ideological like tenets of marxism leninism they're really inconsistent they literally vary country to country which is why you hear marxism leninism with chinese characteristics or with vietnamese characteristics or with cuban characteristics or with russian oh, what they're saying is that there's not actually a marxism leninism it's just a state ideology they're essentially saying marxism leninism is a broad label that you just use alongside a state apparatus to justify the existence of that state it is just beyond belief how ignorant and stupid yet so confident in themselves someone can be all ideologies of all sorts are adaptable on the back, sorry about that. Um, but kind of the fact that, like, kind of take, doing a, a takedown of, like, a communist regime, a lot more fucking difficult, say, like, 100 years ago, like, 100, 150 years ago, than it is, like, today. So, no. Therefore, Marxism Leninism is just a justification for authoritarianism. As Michael Prenti writes in his book Black Shirts and Reds, the pure socialist ideological anticipations reign untainted by existing practice. They do not explain how the manifold functions of revolution. Uh, but real socialism is argued would be controlled by the by the worker, fantasy socialism being run by Lenin and Stalin's Israelites, or the ill world power hungry bureaucratic cabals of evil men who betray revolutions. Unfortunately, it's pure socialism was view is a historical and non not non falsifiable. It cannot be tested against the, the actu actualities of history. It co it compares an idea against an imperfect reality, and the reality comes off. A poor second. It imagines what socialism would be like in a world far better than this one, with no strong state structure or security forces required, where none of the value produced by workers needs to be expro uh, expro expro uh, expropriated to rebuild society and defend it from invasion and internal sabotage. Pure socialist ideological anticipations remain untainted by existing practice. They do not explain how the manifold function of a revolutionary society would be organized, how external attack and internal sabotage would be thwarted, a bureaucracy would be avoided, scarce resources allocated, policy differently are going over. Pure socialists had a vision of a new society that would create. Uh, so, what's the point of this? Where society would be organized, how external attack and internal sabotage would be thwarted, how bureaucracy would be avoided, scarce resources allocated, policy difference settled priority set, and production and distribution conducted. Instead, they offer vague statements about how the workers themselves will directly own and control the means of production, and will arrive- Like Marx is fucking Leninism, Jesus Christ. Like Marx and Leninism is like, how do you get in control of the work? We'll create a dictatorship, it's like, then, then it's communism, but you know, Again, yeah, communism never fucking comes. Either their own solutions through creative struggle. The understanding of how the communism comes isn't actually the map from dictatorship to communism isn't discussed. No surprise, then, that pure socialists support every revolution, except the ones that succeed. This is, of course, Vosh in a nutshell. The only type of revolutionary he'll support is the likes of Thomas Sankara, who was lucky to die early enough to not make any big mistakes in his policies, or to be successful enough that the capitalist propaganda machine would have to kick into full gear to demonize him as much as possible. Vosh has no end of criticism for socialist experiments, but in the entire video about how he wants to build socialism, Vosh never once mentions what happens once the revolution occurs, what his socialist experiment might actually look like. It's obviously extremely difficult. It, he to has, he fucking has. only 25 minutes long, but in a video titled How I Want to Build Socialism, I'd expect more than to just mysteriously stop right at the mention of a revolution and then say nothing more. But again, the reason for this is pretty simple. Vosh is an aesthetically oriented socialist and nothing more. He has never actually given the first thought to how a revolution might actually survive because he doesn't really believe in a revolution all that much in the first place. Of course, Vosh is not a new phenomenon. Countless so-called socialists throughout history have also denounced 
any actual socialist experiments. Bosch is just part of a long line of so-called socialist, anti-socialist propagandists more effective than just about anyone else alive at denigrating the same political movements they claim to support. After all, by instantly and totally conceding, all right, cool. right uh, yeah, I'm not hungry. I can't come in. Societies as dystopias without the tiniest bit of pushback, except sometimes Cuba, where they might push back in the lightest of ways. Other leftists, uneducated about these issues, like I was, can look at people like Bosch and think that if even a socialist is anti-USSR, then the USSR must have been an authoritarian dystopia, right? It was an authoritarian dystopia. The anti-USSR works of useful idiots like George Orwell, after all were promoted heavily by the CIA for a very good reason. Of course, it's almost acceptable <laughs> for people in Orwell's time to have succumbed to the endless propaganda. But there is not much of an excuse in this day and age when there is so much... It's to say that there was not genuine errors that understand the source, many genuine socialists to the USSR, and perhaps none were more damaging than excess of the Great Purges. Well, yeah, the USSR under fucking Stalin was, was fucking monstrous. Like, there's no freedom, there's no, like, and you have there's no, there's no democracy, it was nothing. Time and time again. Unsurprisingly, most of Vash's audience are also pure socialists themselves. I got instantly banned from his Discord for just trying to say the same thing people- You were banned for uh, reason. Uh, cringe, am I defending authoritarian state? See, see, see screenshots above if ban appeal. Like fellow traveler and Michael Prentis said. Of course- Okay, so he's not showing what he said then, okay. How is Bosch so effectively- completely shut down any conversation with people to his left, people who try to debunk these and similar falsehoods that he spreads. And how has he cultivated such a large, devoted audience in the process? Well, Vosh has a Batman's tool belt full of strategies that he uses to avoid and effect criticism or demonize his critics, both in- I thought this would be a bit more interesting because the last 26 minutes have been fucking boring. All it's been is like, MLs and tankies aren't like evil people. We may think about creating a dictatorship and somehow getting to communism without actually stating it, but you don't know your beliefs. You don't understand what you believe, whilst I also say I don't understand what I believe. In debates and out of them. One of his very main strategies against people to his left is to scarecrow them by comparing their arguments or them. This mass, this video scarecrow argument. Reminds me, I want to do my bloody a video series on the debate fantasies, which is what I'm going to be doing soon, now that I can get more free time. To Nazis or fascists. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not bad, per se, to use Nazi comparisons. It's actually often very warranted. But to compare it to people to his left, genuine... Is he defending Noah Samson, quote-unquote, Nazis had the point? Socialists, the same types of people who once fought against Nazi occupation as hard as anyone, is incredible. He's made fascist or Nazi or Holocaust supporting accusations against the likes of Professor Flowers. Well, yeah, because her kind of ethnic state requires the removal of people that aren't black. And the forceful removal of people, which can be violent, is genocide. Luna Oi, Non Compete, Bad Empanada, Fellow Traveler, Danky King. Oh, okay, if, if, when you defy bad empanada, you know you something's gone fucking wrong. Bad empanada is fucking insane nowadays. Hakeem, and I'm sure many, many more. Of course, these same red fascists acknowledge actual red fascists, also known as Pat Sachs or Nazbols, people like Jackson Hinkle or Infrared, for being crazy all the time. There's very clear and, and extensive evidence for this. It's not like a couple people. Like, these people are widely condemned or at least disliked by most of the people that Vosh calls tankies. Vosh says he's not against the idea of critical support. But let's be honest. So is this, is this guy against Stinkle? A liar to say that and then lump all Marxist Leninists into a single category. Every single time I'm like, hey, you know, not all MLs are like this one, or 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 this one. Eventually I have to draw the line. I think MLs are just like that. It's not in Vash's interest to make a distinction between Pat Sox and the likes of fellow traveler Akeem, who have both positive and negative things to say about the USSR, but Akeem has criticized Vosh. Vosh, as many other Marxist Leninists have also- Didn't like Vosh want to debate- Oh no, it's because Hakeem was being so incredibly bad faith that Vosh was like, nah, fuck it, I'm done with them. So they are all red fascists, even though most of them do not uncritically support countries like Russia or China, or express racist or anti-LGBTQ views like the minority- China definitely did, China had like, in wave on support, and when pushed back with it, he was like, you can't define this, <laughs> you're wrong, it's like, it's very fucking cringe. If you're someone like me, though, who was very loyal to Vosh for a while, his strategy of scarecrowing his opponents as insane or fascist- Again, this entire video is a fucking scarecrow. <laughs> ...or uneducated really helps to shut down any rational discussion where Vosh knows he would lose. It shuts down any willingness on the part of his audience to critically engage at all with what the opponent is saying. 
The problem, of course, with this strategy is that if you actually do critically engage with the content of most of the people he demonizes, you will quickly see that many of them aren't uneducated and aren't fascists. This is what happened with me. Professor Flowers was painted as an insane white genocide wanting black supremacist mar well, Yeah, because she even went on, like, he, like, he, generally lovely guy, he went and started talking with her, and she basically won't push past, past, she couldn't get past the whole when he was like, well, your removal of like white people isn't really understandable. And she, he basically was like, am I a colonizer? Because even though I'm not white and I've come and I've immigrated from Iran to Canada, am I might, or my family, am I technically colonized? And she couldn't answer him. She couldn't say, well, oh yeah, I deport you to make an ethnic state. Monster. And after watching Vash's review of the debate, I totally believed him. I remember thinking what a freak this lady was. But I still decided that it would be worthwhile to hear her perspective because I didn't think Vosh was the ultimate authority and I wanted to hear the other side. Then I watched her video responding to the debate she had with Vosh about black nationalism, and I saw that she was far more rational than Vosh painted her. If you're gonna say, oh, you know, PF supports genocide, just shut the fuck up and watch all four of her videos about Vosh like I did. It seems to have consumed a lot of media. I'm looking at his original video, he didn't actually, well, his start of it, we'd like, look at all the videos I watched of Vosh, it didn't seem like many. I don't think he, I think he was like, oh, we've watched had some good ideas, and now he's watched all the fucking like Noah, like Noah Sampson, that she has a point, all those kind of like brain rotters, and it's like, oh no, Vosh is fucking evil, despite their shit being like incredibly like stupid, idiotic, times, and supported by a lot of people. Understand that you're wrong, and you're listening to Vosh's disgusting smear of her rather than actually listening to her. Anyways, then while I was making this video, I also saw her follow-up video about harassment caused by the false accusations made by Vosh against her made her stop making videos again and even drove her to almost killing herself. And that's what really turned my fucking stomach. Thanks directly to Vosh. These were people who I painted in my mind as- Not being funny, her directly like being like inadvertently, like not really understanding her own ideology that would lead to like genocide. It's like, it's just difficult. Being fascist without ever in any real way actually knowing anything about them. I'd just taken Vosh's word for it and the way he'd interpreted Flower's words without any critical thinking on No, you can watch the debate and it kind of, yeah, like she can probably be smug and arrogant. And the fact that, to be fair, mate, if you're white, she sees you as a colonizer and you gotta fucking go. My part, and someone had gotten hurt because countless other people did. Like again, I've watched those talks not just with, um, actually, the thing, the thing that actually turned me against Professor Flowers is actually when she went after him, and he was like, what the fuck have I done? I've just been trying to question you and get understand you, and she wouldn't let him. It is cult-like how Vosh has to paint these people as insane and as deranged as possible in order to prevent any chance of people actually engaging with their content at all, and it works. Of course, Professor Flowers almost killed herself as a result of the harassment she received. There is yeah, I think it's horrible. Actions. I... Saying not to harass someone is not nearly enough. Vosh openly admits he's lazy, he openly admits he's work shy, and yet he acts like and is considered an authority when it comes to politics. So when he calls- He's not like lazy in the sense where like, I think, yeah, something is like, like, oh, being like, being lazy, can't be bothered to do anything. Well, I didn't get me wrong, that's my main criticism of him, it's like, please do fucking research properly before you debate, and it still doesn't. Um, but for the most part, I would say he's lazy. <laughs> Call someone a genocide supporter, his politically uneducated fan base is going to see them as a genocide supporter and treat them as such. Also, while he claims not to support harassing, he just straight up actually does advocate for harassing people. He just keeps it. Yay! Four year old tweets. Four year old fucking tweets. Big enough by using his favorite word, tanky. Yeah, me, these tweets are four years old. And of course, the word tankies at this point has become so vague and nebulous of a term that Vosh is basically just saying. It's, 20, it's 2023 now. These tweets are, are four years old. Anyone four year old Vosh. What was it like? Six, seven years watch is like probably the one the person I probably wouldn't have got on that much. Um, they're all cheap to side, but still. That criticizes me. As a side note, it's also very funny to make fun of red eye posting when he himself has posted at least five thumbnails of Biden with glowing eyes to his YouTube. I don't. What? I don't get what that is. Project now this guy keeps fucking like picking stuff. I was, yeah, I don't being know. dishonest hypocrite. And if you ever confront him on these kinds of inconsistencies, he'll just use another tool in his belt by going to irony to avoid actual criticism of him. By just leaning into it and saying something like, Dark Brandon, hell yeah, <laughs> without ever actually addressing his hypocrisy. True. Whether I don't. Okay, I don't know. Demonizing that. his critics is insane, or never letting a debate opponent finish a sentence, or framing his extensive sexual harassment, threats of rape, silencing, and defaming of pop. And to say this specifically, oh shit, I'm that. Associate with him. I'm going to pause it. And while Vosh at least. Himself as 
this edgy alpha loner who everyone rejects because of how he speaks the truth with him because it might an idea which is pretty much completely destroyed by the fact that Hassan isn't even more successful white edgy alpha twitch streamer who isn't hated by most of the left he's actually relatively very left thing well that's the thing though because well no it's because that Hassan uh that sounds weird. He's very much the sense of like doesn't like any criticism. He will, if you criticize him, you're kind of like you're, you're blocked essentially from his Twitch from his Twitch stream. Um, one thing well. and plus kind of Hassan. Both of them are ironic. He did in some way use Destiny's kind of fame to kind of like slingshot them upwards. But it sounds very more favorable to people like you know Sam. That not is no Sam. Is no Samson. Uh, I've been getting the names fucking wrong. Oh. Let me double check. Oh, it's non compete. Ah, oh, brain rot. This is why I like, actually hate having fucking dyslexia. Noah Samson is the guy who doesn't have a backbone. Uh, and it's non compete because you definitely want the end. This is why I hate being disliked it. Uh, but yeah. Again, Hassan's more likely to a platform people like Noah Sampson, people that Jimmy seen but left, and but then also kind of incorporate people like DJ Mule as well. People who Jimmy are fucking scumbags. <laughs> like it's more the YouTubers they're friends with. More people are the actual people on like the left Twitter space, uh, which is a lot more active and obviously there's way more people. Uh Bosch is a lot more is there's, there's a lot more like Proper lefty allies, not people that kind of say that they are kind of posture. Channels. That's literally the entire video. I'm not strawmanning him. That is his argument, and he says it over and over and over again. You are strawmanning him, though. Not only bragging about himself, but <laughs> portraying himself as this edgy alpha loner who everyone rejects because of how he speaks the truth. He's also just openly insulting other online left creators by making it seem like they don't associate. Because they take they well, what take, um, doing takedowns on people that like criticize him and do takedowns and he's like some criticisms fair enough some of the criticisms that's no, actually bullshit i know some someone's fucking horrendous see with him since they're just concerned with their own image rather than not associating with him because you know much of the online left might actually might find him distasteful as a person or politically or both he, he basically just sounds like an outright fucking weirdo the entire time of course despite having been embarrassed numerous times thanks to so-called tankies bosh is pretty fond of talking like who any examples like so you might be like, oh yeah, this person took him down, I recommend you watch it. Because that's kind of what you need to do if, you, if for people that are, are Vosh fans like me, and you want to pull me away from it. I think he's are scared of debating him at the same time. <laughs> do you think he'll ever re Hakeem? I sincerely doubt that Hakeem will ever talk to me again. Um, usually that's what happens with these people. They dip their toe in the water, and once they realize it's too hot for them, they, they dip out. But nobody does talk to me. Nobody does talk to me. People who freak out about me and make response videos and they get cloud off me, they don't ever want to talk to me. Nobody who yeah, I doubt this guy is like being like, yo, I want to debate you. He talks to me and comes away looking good. Because usually the people who I end up getting in these beefs with don't have good enough points to merit them. Yeah, because they, they start defending fucking USSR at some point. And I start saying, oh yeah, you, you Russia deserves to uh, take over Ukraine and make it like a new Russian empire. But it's pretty weird to gloat about how lefties won't debate you. And I thought, oh, this is the one thing I remember watching of it. Uh, Bosch. Uh, I said the one thing because I watched I watched bits of the live stream. So the one bit I caught out, just saw the emails. Apparently, like fellow travel was actually like drunk during some of the. I don't know which debate it was. I don't know if it was the joke when he starts fucking laughing like a, you know, a joker laugh, or well, this one. But yeah, it basically goes like, yeah, I'm a like not in a hinge, but like I wasn't the best kind of mind. And Rush was like, okay, uh, and then basically starts like harassing him to debate, and he's like, oh, I'm good, thank you. Is it, well, because the point Vosh is trying to make is, what well, it's not going to go any more different than the last one. You want to start defending the USSR, I'm going to be like, what the fuck? And then that's kind of it. Weird, but at the same time, refusing to debate. She emailed me a little while ago, um, asking for another debate and admitted that he was drunk the first time. That was it. Gang, another so-called tanky who makes videos about Vosh, also wanted to debate Vosh. But the best Vosh would give is answering things that Denki King said in Vosh's chat. There's another bit that I did see in Vosh video where he generally thought he had seen it. And, uh, this Sunday. is the Vosh out. But Vosh this is mainly the Vosh out. That. Does everyone remember Denki Kang? That, um, that, uh, that tanky? Yeah, you remember, you remember, remember? The, the tanky shit talked me for like a month and I brought him on and he like flubbed his way through a conversation? <laughs> Vosh is a liar. Yeah, that, 
Nothing. They've actually let him do the toilet and not just type. Yeah, right. Josh, Josh generally thought he debated him and didn't. Oh, like, uh, you, you forgot this about about 100 people. Being, used to ping on stream anymore. Like, Thank you, Kang, on the words that I'm saying and the words that they're saying. At that point, we're not really having a debate. We're just having a back and forth rant to the audience. And if I want to rant to my audience, uh, yeah, you just get rid of it. I enjoy it personally. I do miss it. But it is very blood sports, so. And like that definitely debate seems kind of moved away from that. So I don't feel it's worth it. It's the same reason why like I don't go out of my way looking for, you know, like Holocaust deniers or whatever. If I want to, these points can be dismantled without them here. It's not that I'm afraid of debating them, it's that the information you guys would get from me would be identical in either case because they would never respond to the arguments that I make. So it would literally just be a regular rant of mine interspersed with misinformation from them. What a complete and total bunch of the most pathetic, meaningless word salad I have ever heard in my life. I mean, what is a single thing here that you couldn't apply to right wingers, Holocaust deniers or not as much as left wingers? Bosch's justification for debating right wingers has always been to bring people left, quote unquote. This is such a bizarre double. St no, it's not to bring them left. It's to bring the audience left. He's very, very clear on that. By debating so-called tankies, couldn't you try to bring people away from tankyism, just like you were supposedly trying to do when it comes to the far right? But no, because people who support the USSR are apparently as delusional as Holocaust deniers. So it's just not. Well, yeah, because. You decide the genocide, and then when you push them on the genocide, like Ukrainian genocide, they will ignore you. Even worth trying? It's just so obvious that, again, he doesn't mean anything he's saying, and he's just doing yet another tool in his tool belt, which is to use his idiotic word salad strategy to avoid the fact that, yes, he is afraid of debating people to his left. What is particularly fucked up about the idea that he won't even debate lefties on his stream is that he continues to defend or be friends with disgusting transphobes like Shoe on Head who equate drag- Not anymore! Not if you've uh, watched the latest thing where Vosh actually fucking rinses her. Drooming, ...to the point that even his fan base calls him out on it. And only when Vosh fully realizes he can't defend and enable Shoe anymore without his audience basically leaving him does Vosh truly go hard on her. Or what about Hunter Avalon, who thinks the CIA is apparently a trustworthy institution? If you don't trust the CIA, then who do you trust? And Vosh will not only debate, but suck- Yes! Get Jim! ...up to an Israeli Zionist ethno-nationalist, or a literal natural gas lawyer- Oh, f okay, that was- that was- that is a bit anti-Semitic. ...military officer that participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom. But he says he regrets platforming Hakeem. I mean, you can't make this shit up. How does anyone in their right mind still- This guy was a tanky. This guy's never- This the guy's never been a fucking fan of Bosch. ...to be a leftist. Bosch has to be- Like, is there much left here? Because this is- sh From my perspective- Yeah. By the Traveller. ...social movement. It's not the only time he said it either. No, he's not like his social movement. He's being like the left, like the socialism. My social movement with your nonsense. Given how- He's not saying I'm like- It's not the Caleb- of this thing, it's like I've made this, this is mine, get away from it. He's like, no, like people that generally view socialism, like I do and promote it, I agree with them, not you finally overthrowing it, making a dictatorship, and then deciding how we get to communism from there. Demonstrable Vosh's insane ego is, given how obsessed he is with maintaining his image, it's like a child changing the rule. Yeah, I'm done with this. This is just like the same now. Like, that was, yeah. So, other than my brain fart earlier, the guy basically was a fellow traveller fan, fan, a friend of fellow traveller, and I've also seen like a friend of Hakeem. And, uh, and Joni was, was he ever a Vosh fan? Like the video says, uh, no, <laughs> I doubt. Very, very, very strong doubt. Like, like, this was fucking dishonesty, scarecrowing, clip chimping, you fucking name it. The whole plane repeating clips, them not really showing, like, the old debate for the travel, not like the more recent one, even the recent one's over a year old. And kind of, again, not really addressing what he said, more of just, like, what his perception and takeaways are. And the stuff he takes takes it from Vosh are, very, are like, five second clips, and that's it, nothing else. Nothing, the context, the understanding, the, the material conditions of when stuff was said and why it was said and in the context surrounding it was just not fucking discussed. This is my problem with my fucking tankies. Like, like the whole like um again like the whole Vanguard aspect, I think it's fucking cringe as fuck. Hate it. The idea that you have to project that ideology onto so many things in order to defend it. Rather uh, rather than a lot of them don't understand well say they understand that like he's like Oh, we defend some parts of the USR and then disagree with it. Like, no, Fellow Traveller defended the USR pretty fucking hard. Like, very hard. And that's why I was like, very kind of like, yep, I know what a tanky is. You're definitely fucking one of them. Um, and also kind of didn't really didn't understand a lot, of, a lot of the USSR history and kind of, and will reject 
in, like if someone like China, the USSR, or sorry, no, the USSR did do like imperialism, they'll say no, only Western countries can do it, and kind of ignore that element. Of it. It's it's just a dishonesty, or I don't know if it's dishonesty of or, or they're all on their own fucking like warped mind, like yeah. So yeah, I know shit take that video. So I think we'll end it here. So I was this is the watch stream. Peace. See ya. Ah, I'm annoyed about the, the Noah Samson non compete thing. It's my just like the brain being fucking stupid. I just get bloody names mixed up. It doesn't always bloody help. Um, so, yeah, um, probably getting streamed now because it's getting so close to nine where I am. It's getting cold as well, so I want to be in bed. Um, but yeah. It's probably a bit longer today. Uh, I would want to come with the Swear Braveman thing. Um, but I will, I am streaming tomorrow as well. Um, and I am planning to do my other stream on what you call it, a new corruption thing and all that, uh, on Wednesday at the moment. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, on Wednesday, Wednesday. So, yeah. So, and what's this is the one stream, pod over, if you're on YouTube, hello, on Twitch, also hello, right. love you all, and good night, quite dark outside now, see ya.